How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today, we're going to be looking at a new inverter system, and their slogan is simple, smart, and compact. And we're going to try and put it through its paces because it's actually pretty powerful. So this here is the EcoFlow Power Kit. It's an entire ecosystem of how to set up an inverter and solar for an RV. So some people might be intimidated by a system like this. When I look at it, I see quality, customization, versatility, but some people might just see intimidation. They don't really know where to start. So with this Power Hub, they're trying to make things much more simple. So everything is going to connect to that Power Hub. And a lot of the components that we have on this system are basically tied together internally in that Power Hub. So solar charge controllers, connecting to your alternator, being able to have the AC and DC in and out, all of that is going to connect directly to the power hub and have some smart controls. And that power hub, the inverter inside has a 3600 watt output. So that's pretty much anything that you'd want to power in a 30 amp RV. So at first look, this is a compact system and it's different than the other things that they've put out previously. Usually those are portable power stations and this is something that you can install on your RV. But I wanna rewind a little bit and take you along with the install process because with it being simple, it should be easier to install. But I wanna walk through that rather than just a display of it, I wanna actually install it on an RV and show you what the process is like. These batteries are kind of interesting. They're a 48 volt battery, which is different than you typically see in an RV. This is a two kilowatt battery. So I have two of those for four kilowatt hour batteries and uh, they have a five kilowatt battery. So you could do three of those on there. So you can make a pretty big bank, but you can also use these batteries in other areas. The neat thing about them is they have a DC fuse on them and they have an internal heater for those low temperatures. It's heavy. Why am I holding it like this? So the two batteries combined is going to be around 4,000 watt hours, which is about three and a half 100 amp hour batteries. It's going to give you a ballpark. So for our test, we're just gonna do 400 watts of solar. The, the unit itself can take 4,800 watts of solar, which is, that's an insane amount of solar. We, we don't even have that much roof space, but 400 watts will give us a good test. Okay, I ran into a little bit of a snag trying to install the RV, and so I'm gonna have to come up with a little bit different game plan. Uh, what happened was I opened up the smart distribution panel and I realized that every single breaker in here is a 20 amp breaker and I can't swap them out. The way I was gonna set it up, I needed 20 and 15 amp breakers inside of here to run it as a sub panel. Because the way that I see it, this inverter can be installed two different ways. If you have a 30 amp RV, this has the capabilities of being able to have 30 amps in and 30 amps out. So that would, that would work fantastic. And if you're doing something like a van build where you're just gonna be starting from scratch and building your own, you can work off of 20 amp circuits and just build everything that would work on a 20 amp circuit. But with our 50 amp RV, uh, we already have a lot of the wires run through the RV, so we needed to be able to accommodate that. So I was gonna do it as a sub panel. So that meant our main breaker panel, I was gonna put in a new 30 amp breaker that would then feed this sub panel, the smart distribution panel. And then I would take things out of there and have them run through this. So the AC or outlets or uh, different circuits that I wanted to run on here. So if I'm doing the AC, that would be completely fine because the AC is a 20 amp circuit. So that would come into the smart distribution panel just fine. But if I'm moving over the outlets, that's on a 50 15 amp circuit that has 14 gauge wire, it would then not be protected by the 15 amp breaker that would be required to protect it. So uh, with a 20 amp, you run the risk and the possibility of having it overheat, melting the wire, causing a fire. Those are the things that I didn't want to do. So I'm not going to set this up as a sub panel. And instead, I'm just gonna power the entire RV off of this. So everything still has the protection of the existing panel in the RV. And we'll see how well this does because this is still a beast of an inverter. But with all that said, I'm still gonna put in a false wall here and put in the smart distribution panel and install some of that so you can see how that would all lay out and work together. So 
So now that we have everything mounted, this is where the simplicity part comes in because everything just becomes plug and play. So you don't even need a wrench to connect the batteries to the power hub. You just have this connector, you plug it into the battery and you plug it into the power hub. So same with the distribution panel and the solar, you just plug it into the hub. So with all that connected, we can now see that the solar is charging. If we connect it into AC power, we can uh, charge that way too. We actually have a setting in there where we can limit how much it's going to charge. So if you're plugged into 30 amp, you can crank that all the way up to receive the maximum amount of charge from AC that you'd want it to. Or if you were only able to plug into like a 20 amp outlet, you can bring that down to 20 amps so that you don't pop that breaker. But I think it's time to plug the RV into the system and see what we can run. So let's start off turning on something big. So we have things like the fridge and some other stuff on. So we're pulling about uh, 750 watts right now, which is quite a bit, but uh, let's go ahead and crank down this AC. It takes a minute because the micro air easy start, but there we go. AC is up and going, no problem. Let's turn on something else. Okay, so here we are right now running just under around 2000 watts. And if we turn on this tea kettle, another large item, that's gonna bring us up to 3,220 watts. That's that's a lot of watts and it's sustaining it. Both both are running, the AC is going just fine, the tea kettle is going fine. It's nice to know that it can run a couple of large items like this when you need to. Okay, I wanted to sit down and give you a few of my thoughts about the system because everything that you saw up to this point was the install day and that initial test. And we've had it for about a week and a half. So I just wanted to step back and look at the system as a whole. And this is a really interesting all-in-one unit because there's other all-in-one units out there, but this one is specifically designed to be able to go into an RV. You can use it on a cabin or something like that, but the way that it has the 12 volt DC output or 24 volt, if you wanted to, it has that option in there. It's really designed for, for a van life kind of an install. And the install really was pretty easy, the way that they have everything labeled, the packages, so you know that this cable is meant for the, the battery to the hub. Uh, you knew what all the different cables were for. The only cable that I needed to provide was the one to be able to have the unit grounded. So it has a terminal screw on the side and you connect that to the frame of the RV. And I had a timer going. I wanted to see how long it took to install this. So once I had mounted the solar panels and all the hardware and connected all the wires, that was about four and a half hours. Now, the one caveat I had there is I didn't run all the wires the way that I wanted to for the finished product. So I had to come back and run wires from the ceiling down to the power hub for the solar. And I did buy a wire for that too, because the one that came with the power hub, it had the MC4 connectors on there. I didn't really feel like cutting those off, but chasing the wires through the tight areas of the wall, it was just just easier to do it that way. So once I tally all that up, it was about uh, just under seven hours to get it all installed. Overall, I've been pretty impressed with the power kit. We've mainly been charging it by solar and the output of the inverter is quite impressive. We've had to do a couple of firmware updates. I had some questions of some functions that weren't quite working, but they came out with firmware updates and all that is functioning now. So it's been fun to use and it's pretty easy to set up. I would think that the hardest part, if you're not used to upgrading RV electrical equipment, the hardest part might be bringing in the AC power Power, trying to figure out how you're going to bring that to this unit and then the AC power out, how you're going to get it to all your different circuits in the RV. If you have a 30 amp RV, that's a lot easier. But I think that's gonna do it for today. That's my initial thoughts on this unit. I do have to say that they did send it to me for review, but I am genuinely impressed with it. But it'd be fun to compare this to some other systems that are out there. So we might do that in the future. So like I said, I think that's gonna do it for today. So if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will. See you next video.